So we have Professor Dawn Sim of Moorfields Eye Hospital here today. Welcome Dawn, great to have you. Dawn is also a co-founder at MTHK and today we're talking about eye bags, bags under your eyes and how we can, uh, how they come about and how we can manage them. Do you want to explain to us um, who do eye bags affect? So eye bags is such a broad generic term, there are many different types of eye bags, but eye bags can affect everyone. And a lot of it uh, has to do with what are eye bags and the different types. So within your eyes, there is a layer behind the skin that prevents the eye from moving forwards you know why do my eyes not pop out for several reasons it's attached but there is a layer of um we call it the orbital septum and it's a thick fibrous layer that prevents the fat from behind from popping out on you know just under the skin so we do have some under the skin fat that we all should have but behind that is a whole big socket full of muscles and eye stuff and fat and as that's as you get older that septum becomes thinner and bits of fat from behind can come to the front and that looks quite bulgy. But saying that, um, it's not just about age. Uh, different uh, people have different thick septums. So this fibrous layer can be thin in some, thicker in others. And that's why some people have bigger eye bags or less eye bags at different ages in their lives. If, if you notice your eye bags change, the reason for that is that um, if you are tired, the tissue underneath the skin becomes a little bit swollen and then that bulges forwards. And uh, that is one most common cause of, of eye bags and not getting enough sleep and um, just being tired in general. So moving on to when when are you most likely to get bags under your eyes? So I touched on this a little bit, you know, we talked about aging, we talked about the lack of sleep. But I think the other things that we should consider is if you have any inflammation, so if you have hay fever or allergy, or even if you rub your eyes, or if you have an eye infection, there will be swelling. And the swelling around the eyes can appear as eye bags because the fat collects in around the bottom of the eye. And we do have tissue around to, to demarcate certain parts of our face. And that demarcation just happens to be just here. And so therefore the swelling would pop out rather than spread out, so to speak. So this inflammation can uh, take the place of allergies. and uh, But other things that can cause uh, eye bags are um, if you take a very salty food and an entire bag of crisps um, and that causes water retention and you know, uh, we do feel it sometimes we go oh I feel very puffy today um, had too much salt uh, and that's similarly for eye bags if, if you have high salt intake your eyes can appear quite swollen but the key things I think are um, tiredness inflammation so like allergies and, and very excessive salt intake um, and being unwell or inflamed around the eyes itself I think it, that you know leads us very uh, comfortably into talking about what can we do to make it different smoking generally uh, causes um, degeneration of um, the skin and I think smoking can impact both eye bags as well as circun circles around dark circles around the eyes. Um, you know, if you if you if you if you talk to any uh, kind of uh, smoker that's given up, you know, for a period of time, you would always notice that their skin looks a lot better. And then that it's you know two factors. One is the collagen, um, which is the, the main structure of the skin, but the, elast the elasticity of the skin is also different. Moving on to prevention, um, any advice on how to prevent or help reduce the appearance of eye bags? So I, I, I have eye bags too and I can give you my personal one. Um, 
I think getting enough sleep is important, but understanding, you know, I talked about quality of sleep a lot uh, in other places, but sleeping position is important as well. So this is my heart. This is my eye. When I lie down, they're in the same position. And if your heart is in the same position as your eye, you know, the, the chances of fluid draining from uh, the uh, bits of your body into your blood vessels are, are lower. But if you elevate anything, you know swelling goes down. So if you sleep on an elevated position with pillows, that will help. We also know that cold uh, helps with inflammation, but also helps with swelling. So things like putting tea bags in your eyes or cucumber slices, cold spoons um, are important as well. So we've got position, we've got temperature. So the last thing is to make sure we uh, keep our eyes hydrated and moisturized. So don't have any irritation within the eyes. You, we've all seen people with hay fever, or eye infection, the skin and the bags around the eyes swell as well in response to that inflammation. So keeping the surface of the eye healthy um, is key. So when you keep your eyes moisturized, I think it's important uh, to remember to do it regularly and to use um, different means to do it as needed. So if you have very dry eyes or if your eyes are mild, you might want to use a drop or spray um, interchangeably, but do it regularly through the day. And depending on your activity, you may want to do it more. So if you're in front of a screen, you're in air conditioning or you're out in, in you know, hot, dirty, commuter, um, train stations, you might want to do it more. Um, but also to ensure the hydrating of the eyes doesn't irritate the eye itself. So to make sure that you use preparations that are preservative free, because the eyes do not like preservatives that we put in drops. Although it keeps it free from infection for, you know, like five years, like tin food, um, it irritates the eyes and that would compound uh, and, and defeat its purpose. Moving on to um, surgery, are there any, uh, when would you use surgery and then what does the surgery involve? So there, are, there is surgery for eye bags, it's called blepharoplasty. Um, it tends to be performed when there is excessive skin in around the eye, the, usually the lower lid, but also the top lid if required. So as we age, um, the skin becomes less elastic, and if if there is you know constant stretching, so or, or even if there isn't, so if your eyes swell up and down, you can have an excessive skin formation that can look like an eye bag. And so with the surgery, it removes the excessive skin and then uh, tucks it back into the the lid line, so you can't see. Um, um, you know where the incision is. With blepharoplasties, there are different types. So you can do a blepharoplasty of just the skin, or you can do it of the muscle underneath, or you can do it of the fat behind that. Um, and different uh, different levels of eye bags and different um, causes of eye bags will require different surgeries. So I would really recommend talking to a surgeon about this because it's quite individualized. But most people will find that they're very happy with the um, outcome of the surgery. The one thing to remember is if you overdo it, it does pull your lid down, down and you will not be able to blink um, sufficiently to lubricate the eyes. So there is a fine balance of how much to tighten and then um, how much to leave to allow for, for this natural blink that we all have because it maintains eye health. So find a nice surgeon that will talk to you about that. So now looking at going into a bit more detail, looking at bags under eyes, can you talk us through the, the, the different mechanisms by which bags under eyes are actually formed? So yes, I, I mentioned the different types of bags under eyes. Um, the most common is where it's just fluid. So, um, you know, if, if you have fluid accumulating just underneath the skin of the eyes, and that can be caused by different things like hormonal changes, allergies, too much salt intake, 
that's one cause. So there, there are four main causes. So that's the mildest, they're very reversible. And you would notice that it changes very quickly from, you know, the morning you wake up, you've got these swollen eyes and by the afternoon it's gone because the swelling is gone. You're walking around, your muscles are pumping, all the fluid's gone back into your blood system and churning around your heart. The more serious ones are um, uh, where the fat from the socket of the eye comes through a layer that usually prevents it and comes forwards. And this can happen as we age and we begin to lose our elasticity of our skin and from the layers that prevent this fat from coming out. And that tends to be permanent. Other causes are a little bit more rare. So we know that within our body, there are, we have blood flowing all around our body. And then that supplies nutrients into our tissues. Um, but we also have a lymphatic system that drains all this. So if there is something wrong with the lymphatic system that drains fluid, um, that could be uh, one of the causes as well. But this is pretty rare um, unless you have a reason, uh, a, a medical condition that impacts this. Lastly, um, we have a hormonal imbalances or any uh, inflammatory conditions that might cause um, the eyes to look more prominent, such as uh, thyroid eye disease, so these things, if you, I think, how you differentiate this? So by and far, most people will have periorbital edema, which is the number one reason. The others, the way you differentiate this is it, it happens out of the sudden and it tends to be uh, sustained and doesn't fluctuate. And if you notice that, then I, I would uh, see an eye specialist. <laughs>